In Game of Thrones, one group of characters has the exclusive benefit of being dilemma-free, the White Walkers. They seem hell-bent on death and destruction, and so far it's a job they've accomplished with phenomenal efficiency. In many ways, the White Walkers feel rather out of place in the Thrones universe, which is primarily defined by ambiguity. Because the enemy is real. It's always been real. So who are the White Walkers, and what are they truly after? I saw Craster take his own baby boy and leave it in the woods. I saw what took it. Both the books and the show open with a White Walker massacre, quickly establishing them as among the main antagonists of the series. In their brief appearance, the White Walkers exhibit a penchant for ritualistic cruelty, excellent fighting skills, and the ability to reanimate the dead. Whites, the zombies of the thrones, operate on behalf of their overlords, rising in the middle of the night and causing havoc. His skin was pale, like a dead man's. His eyes bluer than clear sky. The Watch and the Free Folk have to burn their dead to prevent reanimation and further troubles. Despite the real and present threat they pose, the White Walkers aren't taken very seriously by those from south of the Wall. Ned Stark dismisses the Ranger's first-hand account outright. The madman sees what he sees. And even Tyrion Lannister remains deeply skeptical. The ones who flee say they've seen the White Walkers. Yes, and the fishermen of Lannisport say they see mermaids. In fact, it takes the disastrous Great Ranging for the Watch themselves to realize what they're up against. Even with the help of the Free Folk, the Watch goes on to suffer another major defeat at Hardhome. These aren't entirely futile encounters though, as the Watch and we get to learn more about the White Walkers. We see that they're immune to conventional weaponry, which they shatter with ease, but highly vulnerable to dragon glass, as proved by Samwell Tarly when he stabs a walker and Valerian Steel, as shown by Jon Snow. We also witness the Night King's powers befitting his position as the leader, and he shows that the White Walkers multiply using Craster's sons. The origins of the White Walkers are finally explained in Season 6. In his vision, Bran witnesses their creation by the Children of the Forest, who were desperately in need of a powerful weapon in their war against men. The ploy eventually backfired. Thousands of years later, the Walkers are slaughtering the children and men alike. The Walkers, or pure evil, being created by good, the children, gets at a key thematic focus of the show, the interrelation of good and evil, and the balance between opposing elements, such as fire and ice. What you're watching is the creation of this absolute evil. So the absolute evil isn't absolute after all. No one's innocent really in this world. And there is just something really beautifully right about the idea that the great nemesis of mankind were created to protect the children of the forest from mankind. In a general sense, the threat of the mysterious walkers represents our fear of the unknown, the thing we don't even know to be afraid of. They were gone for thousands of years, and when they do return, people are in denial, despite ample evidence. Adding to their mystery, they appear only sporadically, sending whites in their place, and are usually heard about in disturbing second-hand accounts. But one night, Bruni disappears. People said he left me, but I knew him. He'd never leave me, not for long. The walkers are also a direct representation of winter and death. They slaughter anyone in their way, and they literally bring the storm. In some ways, they seem to embody fate, like the winter that must eventually come and death that must fall upon all things. The White Walkers are an advancing danger we can't stop or control, but must deal with. A more timely interpretation of the White Walkers is as a metaphor for climate change. We have things going on in our world right now, like uh climate change that's, you know, ultimately a threat to the entire world. They're invented to benefit their creators, just as coal, for example, powered the development of modern industry, but end up backfiring and causing substantial damages, like the unstable weather that results from climate change. In addition to representing the backlash from our actions, they're an unstoppable force of nature. And just as with weather changes, those who are most vulnerable to the elements are affected first, while those who are wealthier living in developed areas have the luxury of being able to ignore the problem. Whether we associate the walkers with climate change, winter, death, fate, or evil, most of all, they're a reminder of the bigger threat beyond our smaller infighting. If we don't put aside our enmities and band together, we will die. 
And then it doesn't matter whose skeleton sits on the Iron Throne. Instead of uniting in resistance, all of the affected parties within the show spend more time bickering and focusing on their own short-term interests, or even denying that the problem exists. Those at the front of the battle lines can't turn back the tides alone, without the unified help of everyone coming together to face the bigger fight. The war is not over. And I promise you, friend, the true enemy won't wait out the storm. He brings the storm. All of this leads us to circle back and ask, are the White Walkers really that dilemma-free after all? Martin's writing is all about subverting our expectations and flipping the cliched tropes of fantasy. So he's not going to give us a final climax and ending. It's just a traditional showdown between easily defined good versus evil. Like other groups in Game of Thrones, the White Walkers may fear for their survival. There are men living north of the Wall, dragons are back in existence, and Valerian steel and dragon glass, the only weapons that kill White Walkers, are forged dragon fire. And since they apparently need infant human sacrifices to procreate, the Sons of Craster may not be enough. As we see Jon Snow lead the fight against the White Walkers and Daenerys Targaryen get to Westeros, we may discover that this fight of ice and fire has some unforeseen complexities. And it's unlikely that some of these characters will look up from their infighting anytime soon. Fear is for the long night, when the sun hides for years and children are born and live and die, all in darkness. That is the time for fear, my little lord, when the white walkers move through the woods.